It's the kind of thing that, you know, American um, politicians are puppets and English politicians are puppets. But nevertheless, a personality does seem to make a difference, um, at least for a short time. And it would seem that Barack Obama is um, kind of honest. He actually might want to make the world a better place. And, um, you know, um, maybe he's got a chance of getting in because if there's one good thing about President Bush, it is that it has become so clear the harm that that, um, a pro that, that view of the world, that American old, old traditional view of the world has had, the idea that the world belongs to them, that it's there for them to exploit, that every prize in the world, you know, the dense population of Indonesia, for example, belongs to them because the world must be run for cheap labor, profit, and the idea that the American people must always maintain their standard of life. And we know that we're all going to die if that um, ethic continues. So I would hope that he would get in. to read this manifesto. It is against um, indiscriminate consumption. It's about discrimination and um, it's about art. I, I won't tell you anything more about the manifesto but people come back to me and they say you're really hypocritical. How can you say that you know you you want people to stop consuming and to choose well what they do, what they care about. Um, and I just say, well, it's, it's to do with the art lover, but if you are really trying to understand what makes us human, then you are doing something very positive and you, we need a changing ethic for the world because the ethic we've got, as I've just said, is the one that will kill us. And so it all seems very hypocritical that I am saying, you know, I think fashion is, is great. And all I do say is buy less, choose well, and uh, I'm saying that it's somebody who discriminates, somebody who's thinking, somebody who's not swallowing everything that they're told, they're not buying the latest thing, they're not interested in the latest thing, they're not interested in the latest art. They know that art is, is, is universal and timeless and that the Mona Lisa is much more modern than something stuck, stuck on the wall in the airport lounge of Alitalia when I just got on the plane. Um, Anyway, I wanted to try to say that if it is visual that people are discriminating, I think this is something that is very good for the world. Think of all those people in China that want to copy the way we are. It's so much better that they um, buy a wonderful pair of shoes um, than that they think that they must travel in a traffic jam all the time, you know? I mean, I just, I just think that if you want to be a thinking person, a person that really is critical of the world we live in, wants a fairer society, we're terribly, terribly privileged. We can choose. And I think we're not at a point, and, and so we have to wear clothes, and I'm saying choose well. And it's really great if it's visual, visual, that people aren't just consuming all the rubbish. It's actually hypocritical for people who've got money to look poor and, and think it's wrong. No, they shouldn't. They, they should buy really lovely clothes, but not too many. <laughs> I 
I actually want to produce less. I'm just sick. I'm actually quite sick of having to do too much. And I really, really prefer to do less and to do it really well. I mean, the thing is that everything I do, I do really, really well, but it's just knocking me out. I've just got too much to do. And, um, and um, I just think you should, I don't know, I think the time is coming somehow that people have to, you know, you, you, you can't offer something to everybody. You can offer a choice and you can make it the best that you can do. And sometimes I do think that we try, because fashion must always expand somehow, I, and, it, and it comes so quickly around, and oh gosh, I don't know, I really just wish that I didn't have quite so many collections to do, honestly, I, and I would like to find a way to, to do less and to do more special, really. Anyway, I, I only talked about my interest in Melissa, and there's two, part, there's two questions in one. Yeah. What, did, what did Naomi do after she fell over in the shoes? Well, um, she's a very proud woman, Naomi, and she laughed when she fell, but she was inside, she was very angry. <laughs> <laughs> and she was very angry with me, and so we had to repeat the show because it was in a very small venue we had to do it twice and she lay on the floor and she said I'm not doing it again um, she said but yes I will do it for you but uh, if I fall on that catwalk you can you can come and get me because I'm not getting up if I do fall again <laughs> and um, it, she was in a tartan outfit and we gave her this sort of special stick, this sort of tartan, this cane, this Scottish stick, stick to go walking in, and so that she would have something, so that she would be okay. But just because she's very arrogant and very proud, she didn't use it like a stick, she just held it like that, as if I don't <laughs> think the stick and she was okay. And in fact, I haven't told you the real story because she was wearing some rubber stockings. The reason she fell is because you have to be so careful in those platforms, a little tiny thing that you will wobble and you have to let yourself go if that happens. No, she had these um, rubber stockings on and the stockings stuck together a little bit on the leg and it was just enough to just make her walk break for a second and that's what made her fall. Well, have some of you been to the other zone? I'm not sure. I just want the full experience of going there. I mean, it's just somewhere supposed to be amazing. And um, I'm just going to go there and just see. <laughs> <laughs>